Right, welcome to Butler School, episode 11. Uh, it's Friday night, well it's Friday night for me, so when you're watching this it'll be Saturday night. Either way, it's time to have a little drink and celebrate, so it's cocktail night. Now, I know when you're thinking of cocktails you might be thinking of um, Manhattans and uh, pina coladas and things like that. But generally speaking, that's not what butlers make, that's not what people have when they're having a grand reception. Um, I have done it a few times before, I quite enjoy making cocktails, quite enjoy drinking cocktails, but usually what people mean when they cocktail, they say cocktails is pre-dinner drinks. To be honest, they might even mean champagne when they say cocktails, which is really quite confusing. It's an American term, but it's definitely uh, taken on as being the common parlance here as well. Now, your two most popular cocktails are... Um, very simple, gin and tonic, don't really need to tell you what goes into that, and to be honest the mostly equally simple um, martinis or um, gin or vodka cocktails as they're also called. Um, so we're going to make a couple of those um, and a few other things. So we'll start off with the easiest and um, as my wife Claire's had to do all the camera work for this, um, the first one will be hers, a nice little gin and tonic for her because I know she likes that. You don't need a lot of equipment, generally speaking, for cocktails. All you really need is something to mix it in, um, some sort of spoon to mix it. Uh, I'm quite lucky as far as like spoons, I've got a beautiful silver spoon there and also this absolutely stunning from um, our friends at um, Hamilton and Inches here given us this beautiful um, silver cocktail stirrer isn't that absolutely gorgeous with a strawberry on top so I think that's absolutely lovely I'm really looking for it be first use of that so I'm looking forward to that so let's start with um, our uh, uh, let's start with our gin and tonic now Normally, I would say put quite a lot of ice. Probably fill the glass sort of halfway with ice like that. Now, I'm actually quite limited with ice. I, you know, I'm in isolation. I've actually only got one ice cube tray, so I've only got like nine cubes of ice to last the whole thing. So you just imagine that that's half full of ice. Then you want a decent amount of decent gin. Life's too short for cheap gin because the difference between cheap gin and expensive gin is a matter of about six pounds, but the quality difference is huge. Um, and even if you're going for just a sort of one up above the sort of cheapest, something like a nice Tanqueray, that's a, a, good, a good gin to drink. But experiment, see what flavors that you like, and the same for your clients, find out what sort of flavours they like, try them with different ones. They'll like the fact that you're sort of saying, ah, oh, look, here's, um, for example, here's a rock rose gin. It's um, from the sort of northern most part tip of Scotland. It's got um, these particular botanicals that grow on the cliffs. They'll love that knowledge that you've got there. Now, I'm going to use this one, which is from Gordon Castle because the uh, Gordon Castle are clients of ours and they're good friends. So always very keen to use their truly splendid gin. Now I've got a nice big slug of gin. The thing is for butlers, we don't have to measure stuff. We are not working in a bar or a restaurant. We haven't got any weights and measures regulations. We're just start serving private people in their house. We can just work a good measure by eye so people can enjoy it. When you're garnishing a gin and tonic, um, they usually have little recommendations on the bottle as to what makes a good garnish. You know, sometimes a slice of um, green apple, some rosemary, that's always a nice one, um, lime, lemon of course, um, cucumber with the Hendrix. Now, I don't have any of those things uh, because, you know, the shop's all shut and I can't get everything else in. So. But just choose the one you like. Um, tonics is, make a huge difference to uh, the flavour because of course you know two-thirds of this drink is is tonic so 
find one you like. This is um, the sort of ubiquitous beaver tree, which is sort of taken over from Schweppes as the market leader now. Uh, I'll be honest, I actually prefer Schweppes, but a lot of people prefer fever tree. It really is just your own personal taste. There's, don't let anyone tell you that uh, you're wrong if you like a cheaper brand or a more popular brand, because it's, it's just what you like. So, there we go. You want, you want to taste the gin. You don't want to just taste the tonic. So I'll just um, bring this over to Claire. There you go, Don. Thank you. So now I'm going to make what is probably the most common pre-dinner cocktail that you'll make, which is uh, basically a vodka martini or a gin martini. Although I'm going to mix it up a bit, pardon the pun, and I'm actually going to make a Vespa martini, which is a personal favourite of mine, um, invented by the... Um, author Ian Fleming. Again, you want to you want to try and go for as, as you know, I'm a bit limited on my supply of alcohol because again, I can't go and get more, but go for the sort of best quality booze that you've got because, um, you know, you'll notice the difference when it comes to it. Now, it's, it's quite a lot of booze in this. If you're giving someone a Vespa, you need to make sure that they can handle it. So it's a double slug of vodka. I am measuring this one for the simple reason that I want to get the ratios right. It's not a question of, you know, whether I'm giving a legal amount of alcohol. In fact, I'm giving more alcohol than you're really legally allowed to in the UK if you were selling it behind the bar. Um, but I want to get the ratios right. So decent slug, double slug of vodka and then accompany that with a double slug of gin. This time I'm gonna go with the um, St. Andrew's Eden Mill. That's got a lovely smell to that, absolutely gorgeous uh, smell. Yeah. And this is, as it comes to cocktails, this is about as simple as you get. And that's how I like it, simple, I don't want palm trees. So, double slug of gin in there. And then the optional edition of the vermouth. I know, you know, it's called a martini, it's an eponymous drink, uh, named after, of course, the sort of leading brand of vermouth martini. Although some people have a strange idea that it's actually named after some some miner called Martin or something like that. That's, you know, it was, it's, it's named after the drink, it's not. Um, but get a decent, decent quality one. Um, taste them, drink them, I, I love, Vermouth myself. I'm a big Vermouth fan. I like just drinking it as it is. This this particular one, this is absolutely lovely. Now, the amount that you put in is tiny. I'm not even going to use a measure. I'm going to use a spoon. So it's literally a teaspoonful max because it is a very strong flavour. So you just put that in it's a little tiny bit. All it does is take the edge off of the booziness because it's very sweet and it's got a lovely sort of herby essence to it whereas you know your vodka and your gin obviously there's quite a lot of botanicals and herbs in your gin but the vodka is just a real hit of alcohol so by the time you've got all that in there you just want a little bit of sweetness just to take the edge off and let's just give that a stir stirred not shaken slightly uh, not going with the inflaming feel there so the thing is, if you shake it, what will happen is, you are just, I'll give it more disturbing than that. If you shake it, what will happen is, you end up with an awful lot of water in it, because the, the ice will really melt in the shaking process, and you'll end up with quite a watery drink. You want it cold, but you don't want it full of water. And now you need the lid, because you don't want the ice. The ice was in there purely just to make it cold. It's not in there to go into the drink. Now, at this point, I would say put it into a martini glass. I don't have a martini glass, so it's going in a Paris goblet. It's not the nicest way to present it, but um, I'm sure in the stately home you'll be working in, you'll have a much better selection of glasses. So, let's put that in. Now, 
Oh, I mean, it's, it's boozy, but it's lovely. Just give a swig of that. It's worryingly easy to drink for something that's flora rhinoceros, I tell you. Now, an olive is a nice little addition to a martini. So I'll just stab one in the bowl here. Go for the ones without stones. Unfortunately, I only have the ones with stones. So I'm already contradicting myself. Put that in, put a stir. Now, if someone asks you for a dirty martini, what they want is a bit of the juice. So not, not a massive amount, about half a teaspoonful um, of the juice of the olives. You just put that in like that. It's just a mixture of um, salt water and olive oil. Just give that a good stir. And then Hmm. Again, just changes the flavour. It's subtle, but it just changes it. Absolutely. Gross. Right, lovely. Now, I'm not going to say most of the drinks you're going to be serving are very simple, but you can make them a bit more interesting, a bit more entertaining. For example, what I've done here is this is a lovely way of serving straight vodka. It's not the prettiest glass, but make sure you don't use the prettiest glass because it's going to go in the freezer with ice in it. So if you use a very delicate crystal, it's just going to explode. So don't do that. So it's a bit of a bulky glass, but I've just filled it with ice and I put a bit of strawberry in there. And then what you can do is you can just pour this shot of vodka just straight in the top like that. Already, I mean, I, I hope you agree, you might not. I think that looks great. Look, if I, how can I just sort of show you? It's because it's a clear liquid, it just looks like the strawberry is just floating in it. And I made sure that I gave the strawberry a good swirl around in the ice. The ice has actually got strawberry flavour, so it's going to be ever so subtle, but it is going to come through as that starts to melt a little bit. And then, and yeah, just taste the vodka, obviously. But um, just a nice, nice little touch you can do when you're serving. No one there does it without the... Uh, without the uh, strawberry. Now, I froze these quickly, which is why, um, and I don't, you know, I was trying to, you see this pattern with the frost? What I did was I used some cling film to stop the ice going all the way to the bottom of the glass. So you get like a frost pattern and then a layer of ice. Now, I was experimenting, trying to do something quite pretty. I'm not sure whether it worked or not. You can do your own thing. If you want the ice to be completely clear, it's very simple, just freeze it slowly. So first put it in the fridge for a while to get the water really cold, then move it into the freezer. If the ice freezes slowly, it'll be crystal clear. If it freezes fast, the faster it freezes, the more bubbles in it, the less clear it is. Okay, so I'm just racing through these quickly because um, it's a bit of fun. Now, here we have I'll have a little chat about these. Now, I've not tried these yet. Um, I'm going to try this tonight. I'm just going to try one of them because I'm, I think if I was to drink four bottles of um, full sugar Coca-Cola, that would probably have a lot more effect on me than the alcohol. I think I'd end up sort of in some sort of hospital ring. But I love the idea of it. It's certainly beautifully presented. It's sort of, this looks nice on your bar when you're setting it up. It looks a lot better than little red Coca-Cola cans anyway. This one, they all have a little suggestion from famous um, cocktail makers as to um, what to serve them with. This one says a premium dark spirit. Now, to me, this, or even if you're going a bit more extreme, something like this is a premium dark spirit. I mean, this is a very premium dark spirit and there's absolutely no way I'm gonna mix that with Coca-Cola, I can tell you that for sure. Um, but I'm thinking in the spirit of it, they probably mean something more like a Johnny Walker Black Label or a Jameson's or a Bushmills or something like that. Um, or maybe a nice dark rum. Rum and Coke is obviously a classic as is like Jack Daniels and Coke or something like that. So let me give that a try in a sec. 
Um, if you're serving single malt, like we were just saying with the Laphroaig, now you might just grab another glass. Got these nice um, Glen Kern glasses, which are very good for well, they're, they're designed for whiskey, so they're obviously very good for whiskey. Mm. These are all branded for the uh, Scottish Rural Awards because we've actually been nominated for two Scottish Rural Awards one for Best Newcomer and one for Best um, Teaching um, Company for Rural Scotland. So that was very nice. But I get that in there. Um, so whiskey, you're serving a single malt. Again, you just want a measure, however much you see fit. And then what I would recommend as a butler, you have a nice jug of water. You give that to your guest with the whiskey, let them put it in themselves. Nine times out of ten, you'll put the wrong amount of water in for a guest because it's so personal. Some people like literally one drip. In fact, you can buy like little pipettes for whiskey where you just drop a drip in. It just takes the edge off. Some people like to absolutely drown it because it's the top of their drink. They can do whatever they like with it. If someone wants ice in it, they can have ice in it. If they want Coca-Cola in it, they can have Coca-Cola in it. They're paying for it. Personally, I wouldn't. I'd just put a tiny, tiny bit of water, but you know, if they're paying for the whiskey, they drink it how they like it. If they say to you, which they quite often do, how should I drink this whiskey? Then you can tell them, just a tiny touch of water to take the edge off. Opens it up. So, <clears throat> lastly, let's go for this, um, let's try this, um, what's it called, smoky, I think? Yeah, smoky batch number one um, Coca-Cola mixer. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna go for Jameson's with this. Um, oh, it just seems right, sort of Irish and Coca-Cola, it just seems to go together. It's that sort of all American, Irish kind of thing. And I have no qualms about mixing the Jameson's, no offense to Jameson. So let's crack that open, let's have a smell. See what that smells like. Ooh, actually, I expect it to smell like Coca-Cola, but Goodness, it really, really doesn't. Wow. That's got such a strong flavour, uh, such a strong smell. I mean, what's it got in there? It's got um, uh, ylang ylang, um, ambrette seed, pierrot balsam, I'm not even sure that's how you say that, oak extract, I, didn't even, I thought oak was poisonous, there we go, um, guillac wood, no idea what most of those things are, but they're in there. And it smells halfway between varnish and a bonfire. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just being honest. That's why I'm going to try it over this ice first, just to see uh, see what it uh, tastes like just on its own. It's quite pretty, isn't it? See what I mean? Hmm, not convinced, not sure. Reminds me a little bit of Virgin Cola. Do you remember Virgin Cola? Tastes a bit like that. Hmm. But it's not really designed to be drunk on its own, is it? So let's try it mixed in with the spirit. Let's see how it works then. Let's give that a try. Totally changed the nose actually doing that. Ah, oh, no, that's really good. See, they know what they're doing. That is, that is really good. Very, obviously very, very sweet. Um, I would actually serve that really cold if I were you, because it's so sweet. As a rule of thumb, the sweeter the drink, the colder you want to serve it. 
The same is true with wine. Something like a dessert wine. Um, if you're serving a dessert wine, a pudding wine, I would actually put it for the last sort of 10 minutes, whack it in the freezer, get it really cold, so it frosts the glass. Um, same if you're serving like a demi-sec champagne, like a semi-sweet champagne. Again, get it really cold before you serve it. And this is, the same is true of this. The sweeter something is, the colder it is. Because as something's colder, same reason as you don't put ice in your whiskey, actually. Because the more you chill something, the less you taste it. Your taste buds don't taste things that are over a certain temperature or below a certain temperature. So everything has an optimum temperature for service. Uh, for example, I remember from my, from my youth, when I was at college and was working at Pizza Hut, I remember that, because um, they were owned by Pepsi, that Pepsi was served fractionally warmer than Coca-Cola. Fairly useless bit of information for you there, but it's because Pepsi's not quite as sweet as Coca-Cola. Right, so, I'm just motored through that for you, um, because I just want to give you a feel of the sort of thing that you're probably going to be doing pre-dinner drinks, um, when you've got guests coming to your stately home, to your castle, that's the, that's, that's, that's the, the sort of drinks. Then there might be things like Bloody Marys. You always want to make sure you've got some tomato juice on hand. Um, what other drinks? Things like a sherry. If you've got a sherry, keep your sherry in the refrigerator. Same as, um, same as, the, same as the vermouth, keep it all in the fridge. Tastes much better straight out of the fridge. These are all pre-dinner drinks. Um, whiskey is um, something that you could have before or after dinner. It could be an aperitif, it could be um, a digestif. Um, but mostly like a gin and tonic, you would almost never serve a gin and tonic after dinner. Uh, maybe as a pick-me-up, like a long time after dinner, if people are out sort of dancing or something like that and want a long drink, but as a rule of thumb, you wouldn't serve that after dinner. So you've got your sort of pre-dinner drinks and then after dinner you've got your port, you've got your, you've got your port, you've got your whiskey, you've got your brandy, you've got that sort of thing. So anyway, I hope that you've um, sort of kept up with me there. I know I've rattled on through it, but if you've got any questions, please just write them underneath. I always try and go through all the comments, um, send your answers back. Please do subscribe if you want to watch any more of my videos. It's always great to share things with you. So thanks very much. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy a drink if you drink. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.